stop. Stop right there. Don't do it. No, no, don't create that new note because it's a waste of your time. But let's talk about why. The cult of note-taking is failing us. What it's done is convinced us that we need to take notes on everything. On any little thing that comes by, we need to stop. We need to take good notes on it. On every book that we read, we need to take notes on it. And the truth is, we don't need to do that. In fact, you probably need to take almost no new notes once you've got going. Ask yourself this. How many notes do you ever go back to? How many articles that you've summarized or books that you've read in your life do you go back to and say, wow, this was a foundational book. This was one I really need to read. This is one I need to go back to again. I need, where are my notes on this book? Almost none, right? There's very few that I ever go back to. There's on the shelf behind me, about 300 books. There's 10, 15, maybe that I go back to. That's it. And that's probably even a high guess. There's probably eight, eight, uh, it's a little less than 10. There's only a very few that I go back to anyway. Most of the notes uh, I've been taking even over the last year are notes that didn't even deserve to be started at all. They're books that I should have read through, maybe taken one note on it, and that's it. It should have not deserved any more time than that. Even if we ignore clickbait headlines, you know, things just trying to grab our attention online, we still probably shouldn't take most of the notes we take on anything because the writing doesn't involve our interest, doesn't involve something we really are working towards, and so we should just stop. There's an interesting idea in How to Read a Book by Mortimer Adler called The Book Pyramid. Uh, we'll abbreviate it into The Reading Pyramid right now. And that's going to say a few things. First off, most of the things that come across your desk, your eyes, your screens are not worth reading at all. You skim through it and you say, yes, no, maybe, done. That's it. You don't go any farther than that because it's just not worth your time. Now, there's a few things that are going to be worth reading. You skim it and you say, this is worth reading. And so you actually read it, but that's it. It's not worth taking a note on. You don't go any farther than, yes, I read it. Great. And you move past it because it's not worth taking any notes on. I actually see this regularly now in my PCAM weekly email newsletter, which you can find the link in the description below to sign up for that. It's free. There's lots of note-taking articles I think, oh, this is good, but it doesn't add anything to my understanding of note-taking. It's not in my, like, something that I really needed to learn, so I take zero notes on it, I put it in the newsletter, and I move on because I think it's worthwhile. Someone else might find it useful, but I don't think it's worthwhile for me for where my knowledge is in the subject. Maybe one article every two or three weeks is really worthwhile where I take a note on it and I might summarize it and say this is the important point on it. That's it. Almost nothing else in these newsletters do I actually take extensive notes on, do I really dig into, I go through it, I understand what it's about, and I pass it on so that other people may find it useful. Finally, you're going to encounter very few articles, very few reading things in your life that are worth reading well. Deeply reading, taking lots of notes on it, working to understand each point of the author, and working through it. And then a very small percentage of those are worth a second read. Uh, a second read where you go into notes deeper, where you look syntopically across the topic at other works other authors have done in this area. But very few, very few on the bookshelf behind me, one or two maybe, that's it. One or two out of those books I've read, I've read about 50% of them. So one or two are actually worth reading. Again, reading multiple times, like How to Read a Book by Mortimer Adler is one of them. I've read that one at least twice, I'll read it a third time coming up. They're worth reading across the genre as well, so you can understand how more people are uh, addressing these subjects so that you can build your knowledge deeply on it. Probably one of the best ways I've realized I shouldn't take new notes is by changing my keyboard command in Obsidian for new note to open a note. You should always start, once you've you know primed your pump, once you have some notes in there, by opening and start typing you know a few phrases that you think might be a good note title. What else comes up? Is that note you wanted to take really just a nuanced tweak to something you already have written down? So that instead, if you rewrite that note with this new slight bit of understanding, then you have actually increased the value of this note with a new reference, with something new understanding in it, and then that's it. You don't create a new note. So by doing this, by starting off by opening notes in your digital system, as opposed to always creating new, you're going to have better high quality notes that are better sourced, better vetted, and just better all around. Now I'll show you how to do this in Obsidian so that you too can stop creating new notes. Obsidian, I'm going to go and hit command comma. That's going to bring up uh, the settings in the case I'm already on hotkeys. So I'm going to type new, find that, kill the link. Now in Obsidian, it's called the quick switcher. So I'll go 
quick, open quick switcher, customize keyboard command, command N. So now I have it set up so that command O and command N will both open the quick switcher so that it makes it harder to create new notes, it means that I'm going to search in my notes first, find out if I've written anything else about this, anything else pertains to it, and then only once I've done that, maybe I can create a new note. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. Otherwise, honestly, turn off your notifications. You've got better things to do, like read books, you know, increase your knowledge. You can support the channel, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership, or take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. Have an excellent day.